And is Boris Johnson right when he says there's no other way of doing this? Yesterday's press conference, of course, this was. The PM appeared to put an end to the continued speculation that herd immunity is the solution to the pandemic. I know that there are some people who say this economic objective is so important that we should stop all measures to control the virus and stop restrictions of any kind on our social lives and on the way we run our businesses. We can't do that because, uh, alas, the maths is inescapable. We would face many thousands more deaths. And no, to answer one commonly posed question, we would not be able to insulate the elderly and the vulnerable, not in a society with so many multi-generational households. No country has been able to do that. Mm. However, this directly contradicts a recent study from the University of Oxford, which has claimed that shielding just 5% of the most vulnerable Brits could reduce COVID deaths by up to 75%. So is shielding or pursuing a herd immunity strategy the wrong or right option? Professor Mark Woolhouse is an epidemiologist from Edinburgh University and a member of SAGE, the Government Scientific Advisory Group for Emergencies. Mark, afternoon to you, sir. Um, who's got this right, the Prime Minister or the Oxford study? Well, first of all, you haven't, because I'm not a member of SAGE. I'm a member of one of the subgroups of SAGE. I'm okay. just happy to speak to you as oh, a and ha scientist at Edinburgh ha University. Happy to have you on in that capacity. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so, people are right and wrong about different things. They're, they're convoluting all sorts of different aspects of this virus. Uh, so, first of all, herd immunity. Herd immunity will happen or not, whether we like it or not. This is a natural part of the natural history of the virus. Um, and it's important to remember that it's on our side. It, it, it's our friend. The more herd immunity there is in the population, the better for all of us. But that doesn't mean that we should have a strategy that says we should increase herd immunity at all costs. So I do absolutely agree with the Prime Minister when he says that we can't simply let this virus rip, that the public health burden would be too huge. What I don't agree with, and it keeps coming up in these conversations, is you, one of the reasons you can't do this is because you can't protect the most vulnerable people. And as you've quite rightly said, that study in Oxford was really important. We can now pin down 75% of the expected deaths to just 5% of this population. So let's, let's turn this around. These people are at risk. The virus is increasing. Those 75% uh, may well want to take extra precautions. And it's a council of despair to say we can't help them, that we can't give people extra protection that they might want and need. That's nothing to do with letting herd immunity take sure. over or letting the virus rip. It's just common sense. Yeah, so if, if put, put, put any herd immunity um, discussion to one side, I mean, one would want to shield and robustly protect that group regardless, whether we were talking about coronavirus or something else. Well, absolutely. I mean, these people are, are our parents, our relatives, our husbands and wives. Of course we want to shield them. There's a virus out there that, that, that is a significant public health threat to a small minority of the population. It's a, it's a lesser health threat to the rest of us, although it is definitely a threat. The other thing that really is slightly frustrating me at the moment in the current debate about this is, is there's a sense that all we can do for those people, those vulnerable people, is lock everyone down. And that isn't enough, because even if we lock down completely now, the epidemic still has a momentum. And most of those vulnerable people that are going to get infected during the second wave, they haven't been infected yet. Hmm. That's going to happen because the downside of the epidemic, people get infected just as much as they do on the upside. But they haven't been infected yet. We can still do something about this. So I do reject this council of despair that we cannot protect the elderly and the vulnerable and those who are most at risk. Yeah, I mean, it was on, on that point, really, Mark, that I was confused because it, there, there does seem to be somewhat of a contradiction in, in, in those two elements of this story and if you know the last time i looked and i know this is largely anecdotal but you know anecdotes do at some at some level form data uh, data or datum to a degree and the news is full of people who are currently self-isolating because they are vulnerable um, and they are telling their stories on video phones they haven't seen anybody for months so clearly we can get to those people that are most at risk the Prime Minister's well, suggestion seems to be that you simply couldn't sort of hypothecate that group from the, the, the rest. 
Well, you, you can't completely. That's Indeed, not completely. That's why, but... why they need protecting. But you can still greatly reduce the death toll. The death toll is still to come by taking proactive measures, not just to suppress the virus, which is what all the conversation is about, but also to protect the people who are most at risk. And we know how to do this. Uh, it doesn't have to be this extreme self-isolation, but it does mean managing your contacts. And a particularly important aspect of this is if I was a vulnerable person, the thing I would most want to know about everyone I was in contact with, particularly my, my close family members, my carers and so on, is they were virus three. How do I know that? If they've got testing. Yeah. So making testing available to the carers, the companions, the family members of the most vulnerable helps everyone ensure that they're safe. If, if I want to go and see an elderly, frail relative, I, I would want to be tested before I went to do that, to make sure it was safe to do so. That protects her. And you'd kind um, of... And you, you, we, was, we don't have... We, but people aren't given access to testing for that reason. Yes, true. Uh, you'd like to kind of think that if somebody is living in... Uh, Mr Johnson referred to multi-generational homes, and, you know, he's, he's right, there are many thousands of people that live in those particular circumstances, but if somebody is in there and they are elderly and they have respiratory issues or, you know, they're, they're other underlying health conditions, that... I would have thought most people would be only too happy to, and, and probably are already trying to shield those people from the rest. Yes, we all, we all want to take care of our relatives. Of course we do. But what's not happening, because the narrative is all about suppressing the virus, is that the government isn't supporting that activity. As I say, it's not making testing available uh, to the, those household members. It's not, for example, offering alternative uh, uh, accommodation for somebody who tests positive in a multi-general household. Yeah. Well, I mean, the problem is if you haven't got anywhere else to go, then obviously the, 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 the older problem. person has been put at risk. But the government can help here. It can actually provide support for people who want to protect their relatives. It's not going to do that if the narrative is all about, oh, we can't do that. It's hopeless. Yeah. There is no way. Of so what them. sort of, I mean, you mentioned testing. I mean, testing is out there. Is, is it the fact that the testing is inadequate at the moment and we haven't got to enough people? Is that what you're referring to when you say that we're not giving enough help? Well, that's, that's one of the things. We should be making testing people who are in regular contact with vulnerable persons a priority to make sure they're safe. I mean, there are much discussed issues with testing capacity, but on the other hand, there is also coming available these very rapid tests, these very quick tests uh, that would allow us to, change, uh, to, to improve that. But, but even so, just small things like taking extra care if you're a contact with a vulnerable person and you have symptoms. I mean, really don't go anywhere near them. Try and avoid that as much as possible. Mm. Download the phone app so that you do know as a contact of a vulnerable person, if you yourself have, might have been exposed. Do all those things with PPE and, and hygiene. Keep yourself safe to keep the people around you safe. Yeah. Uh, we're not getting the government guidance. But of course, it, I, I know we can't point the finger at, you know, everybody on this but you know some would say well when you look at those that are dying then who are vulnerable was that because those around them didn't take the kind of precautions that you and I are talking about right now well they got, they got infected from somewhere and and it is true that one of the best places to spread this virus is in your in own home so people do have to be aware of that and that comes back to this business about uh, taking care of yourself if you're uh, living with a vulnerable person because that will ultimately save lives. So shielding the most vulnerable 5% could reduce deaths by 75%. You, you would think the government would have leapt on that. Well, you would. I mean, it, it's not going to be the 75% for exactly the reason you just gave. It, sure. It's simply not possible to make this absolutely watertight. Um, but, but you can give it a good go. Half of that or a quarter of that or a tenth of that, sure. that's lives saved yeah. that we can do by advising and supporting people to shield others, and we're not doing it. Mark, thank you. Great to have you on, sir. Thank you. That's Professor Mark Woolhouse, epidemiologist from Edinburgh University, not a member of the SAGE committee, but a member of a subcommittee of SAGE, I think was how he put it. That's all clear now. Um, over to you shortly, 0344 499 1000. What do you make of what he just said? Sat that against what Mr Johnson has been telling us as recent as yesterday at that press conference. He was quite clear. It, the maths is inescapable, he said. Which maths is he looking at? The Oxford study says no. 
And is it really impossible? I mean, man alive, how many times on social media do I have to see a picture of an old lady who's stuck behind glass pleading that she wants to see her grandchildren? These are elderly people who haven't necessarily got huge underlying health conditions. They might have, but uh, they're just vulnerable by dint of their age more than anything else. Uh, that seems to be in the thousands of posts of, here's my gran, I haven't cuddled her since March. Someone's isolating somewhere. We've managed to clearly identify some people who are elderly or vulnerable. What the heck is going on out there?